Welcome back everybody to another beginner's guide to the MPCNC. In this video I'm going to show you how to use Fusion 360 and the post processor to output G-code that you can run with your MPCNC. So first thing I'm going to do here is I have a little test part I made in Fusion 360. So I'm going to come over here from the design tab and move into the manufacturer environment. And all my options you'll see at the top and the side will change. Okay. So the way this works is the first thing you're going to do is you're going to click on a setup and generate a new setup. What a setup allows you to do is define your stock and define your coordinate system and specifically your 000 origin uh, to start the job. So what I have done is I have created a fixed size stock based off of the actual piece of plastic I plan on cutting out today. Uh, I put in dimensions of that here. I've offset my part one millimeter from the edge of this stock. That way, in case I don't perfectly align the stock plastic with the squareness of the machine, I'll have a little bit of wiggle room there. It'll just machine the front edge of that off and make the part nice and straight. And then I've centered it up in the Y and the Z there since my stock is the exact height of my part. Then I've selected this point here on the bottom left-hand corner, the top side of the stock, as my um, stock point, my origin. So my x positive is here to the right my y positive is away from me and the z is going to be up and i press ok after that i generated a tool path um, so in this case i'm going to be doing just a quick adaptive cutout just to show you guys how this works obviously i'd want to do some uh, finishing passes after this to get my tolerances actually um, to the spec that i made for my part but this is just going to be a quick little demonstration so in order to get this toolpath to generate though, you're going to have to add a tool. So up here under manage, there's a tool library and there's a bunch of sample and included tools, but it probably won't have the exact tool that you have. So what you can do is you can click on library, click on add a tool, and then you can type in all the parameters of your tool um, to define it um, up here exactly how you like. So what I have done is I have created a tool that I called 1 8 inch single flute carbide flat end milled plastic. And I named it plastic because all my feeds and speeds on here are set up for plastic. So there's the name. It's a flat end mill. has one flute. It's made out of carbide. All my dimensions are in millimeters. I typed everything in here. Um, you want to make sure your flute length is correct. And then um, this body length and stuff will change how far away um, the... Uh, tool will depict out of the uh, spindle here. So make sure that's correct. That way Fusion knows it's not bashing the spindle into your uh, to your workpiece. Then under feeds and speeds, I typed in what I think works for me. And under posts, I disabled coolant. And then I pressed OK. And that generated my tool. Cool. And then I clicked on this, 2D Adaptive. Created this tool path using that tool that I wanted. And then uh, here's what the tool path looks like on here, which is what I want. So now to post it, you have to click on the post processor up here. Now, when you open it up, it's going to look something like this. And it does not have the MPCNC post processor um, in it. So here is how you get the MPCNC post processor. Go to the V1 site under Home, MPCNC, Mailing Basics. Scroll all the way to the bottom of the site. And here you'll see a link to the Fusion 360 uh, Guffy's GitHub for the post processor. You're going to open that up. You're going to download the zip file. And the place you actually want to download it is probably here under Fusion 360 Cam Posts. So I'll download this file. And once it's downloaded, I'm going to extract it here and unzip it. All right. And then I'm going to take all of the stuff out of here and put it back in the post folder and just delete these two folders that I don't need. Cool. So under Fusion 360 Cam Posts, I have Common and I have these other options here. So now under Fusion 360, I can click on Setup and click Use Personal Post Library, which will automatically navigate to that file path where we just put all the posts and then I'm gonna click this drop down and select the type of board um, firmware that I'm running so I'm using the Rambo that I bought from V1 that came pre-flashed with all of the uh, stuff I need already on it so I'm gonna click on Marlin 2 and that's gonna load the appropriate post processor, post processor for Marlin alright 
So you have all these options here that you can select in the post processor. First one is go to zero at the end. That says it's gonna go to X zero and Y zero at the end of the job. And that's a good thing to consider because you can check at the end of your job if your machine is still going to the appropriate zero zero. If it does not, that means that you lost some steps um, and maybe you're pushing your machine too hard. Manual spindle on off. If you have that selected to yes, when you try to run your code, you'll have to push the button on your LCD knob um, to make the machine actually go. And that tells it that you're going to turn the spindle on like that. If you don't have the LCD, I don't know what this does, so I would probably turn it to off. If this is selected to no, then when you press um, print, it will immediately start doing your job. Now, I would recommend that you select this option here and force feed rate to yes. And what that's going to do is, is that's going to output a feed rate command in every line um, of G code that your post processor, your G code file will run. The reason why that's good for the MPC and C is that the Marlin boards ignore G0 commands, which are cam rapid movements. And you can kind of trick Fusion into actually still giving you rapid movement if you select yes here and select one other setting that I'll show you here in a second. So what I'm going to do right now is keep on moving down here. Separate words, yes, line increments, cool. Leave that here. Now this is a good option to probably select a no. It says I'm going to run G92 when the program starts. Well, if you're going to always position your tool to 000 and then press go, then you can leave that to yes. For me, I like to manually set 000 in the machine code and then I raise my machine uh, about 10 millimeters before I press run. So I do not want my post, my G code, to reset my 00 uh, before my job starts. So travel speed XY, you can leave these um, as the default. Um, or you can speed up the XY a little bit if you want, but I would not go much faster than four or 5,000. You might run into some problems, and I would not increase the Z. Um, disable Z Zepper. This is if you're going to do a tool change. Um, these are ones that I select to know. This is if you have a Z probe. I don't have a Z probe. So by default, when you run this, it's going to try to probe the Z. And what that means is it's going to drive the tool path down, and it won't stop until it detects an end stop, which I don't have, which means it's going to poke a hole in whatever I have on the machine. So I'll select make Z probe no, and it says right here on job start execute probe. So I set that to no, um, and then probe on job start no. Okay, probe Z home no. And then there's all these laser options and a bunch of other stuff, and I ignore the rest of these here. Cool, so now I'm ready to post my code. So what I'll do is I'll just press post. And it's going to ask me where I want to put this file. So I'll put it on my thumb drive. I'll name it test1. Press enter. And it should pop open all of our code. So here you can kind of read through all of this and kind of dissect what it all means. Um, all of these are comments and stuff here, right? This is the diameter of my tool, where it's going to start, all that kind of stuff. Um, Z min is how deep it's going to go. Then I have these start commands here. What I'm looking for specifically is if it says G92, that means it's going to reset my 00, and that'll cause you problems. All right, and then I see down here it says M0, turn on 10,000. This is the command um, manual spindle on. So you'll see this command pop up on your LCD screen and know that that means um, you got to turn it on before you run the, the machine. All right, coolant on, we can ignore that. Um, high feed, so you can see my high feed is at 4,500. And I'll show you how I set that here in a second. Um, cool. Then here's all the commands it's going to run for the adaptive. So let's go back into Fusion real quick, and I'll show you how you can get Marlin to run rapid commands. So under the linking tab, under any of these Fusion um, tool paths, you can click on high feed rate mode, and you want to set it to preserve axial rapid. What that says is that it's going to actually output all of the rapid commands as G0s only for axial, which means up and down, which is good because Marlin will ignore G0, so it will not actually rapid your Z. You do not want to rapid your Z. You want your Z to be firmware controlled as slow because um, if you try to rapid it, it will skip steps. It just doesn't have enough torque to lift the tool up. So if it misses a step, that means that... If it's trying to go 10 millimeters up, it might only go 9.9, .9, which means it starts to offset and then it'll eventually ruin your work. 
But if you set it to preserve axial, it'll output those up and down movements as G0, which get ignored. And all of the other movements will get output as G1. And we've clicked on the enforced feed rate in the post processor. So I can specify high feed rate here to 4,500. Now when I try to run it, um, it will move back and forth at 4,500, which is going to be really fast. All right. So that's all I did there to try to trick it into running. Now that the file is on my uh, USB drive, I'm ready to uh, pop it out and try to run the code. All right, so I'm out here at the machine and I'm ready to start running my code. I just ran G28X, G28Y, so my machine is squared up in the left-hand corner. But my tool is not next to my stock, right? And if you remember from Fusion, I defined my stock point as right here. So now I'm going to zero that in. So if you watch my last video, I showed you kind of uh, one way that I did it, um, but I'm gonna show you a little bit more correct way to do this this time that will account for your diameter of your tool. So what I'm doing right now is I'm just using the uh, computer that I have hooked up to my board to jog this machine over and get it moved in here pretty close to the workpiece, all right? So, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna inch this thing closer until the tool is just touching the stock. And be very careful when you do this because if you mash the wrong increment right now, it will probably break the tool. All right, now that looks pretty close. And you can buy probes to do this and that kind of stuff, but I don't have one. Cool. So that looks like it's touching. Now, if I call that um, Y0, it would actually be wrong, right? Because the center of that tool is not actually on the bottom of that stock. It's offset by the diameter or by the radius of that bit. So what I'll do here is I'll type in G92Y is minus 1.59 which is uh, half the diameter of the tool. All right, and then we'll back it off and we'll do the same thing on the X. Cool. edge of this is a little bit rough where I uh, sawed off a chunk of it, but that'll be okay. All right, that looks pretty close to me. So I'll do the same thing here. G92X is minus 1.59. All right, press go. Move the tool away and raise the tool up above the part. Now I want to check that. I want to see if that tool shows up exactly right here on the corner. So I'm going to give it a G1 command. G1 command says go here. G1, X0, Y0, and I don't want it to take all day, so I'll type in F2000 to give it a speed. Press enter, and it moves there. All right, and then let's lower it down a little bit and see if that's close. Yeah, so that looks pretty close. It's kind of, right, this is a single flute, so it might be slightly off, but I think that's gonna be good enough. Now remember that I told Fusion that my part is actually gonna be offset from my stock, right? And I'll show you here why that's important. Just move them out of the way. So what I actually did was I had my machine engrave these little etchings here on my spoil board. Um, and I did that to help me line up because I know that those are perfectly square with the machine. That's what the machine thinks is in the perfect X and the perfect Y. So if I, um, what I've done here, which is use double-sided tape um, that I got off of Amazon, CNC tape or something like that, um, is I can line that up with these little marks try to make sure my piece is square. But since this edge is kind of nasty, if my part is gonna be made out of that, it's not gonna be very good. So if I offset the part a mil or two or however long you want, 
um, the tool path will actually finish off and uh, machine that material to give me a nice clean looking part. All right, so let's go back to um, G1, X0, Y0, make it fast. Let's go 3000 and it goes flying over there. Awesome. All right, so next thing I need to do is zero out my Z. And I want to do this somewhat reasonably close to where it's actually going to be machining it since I'm not um, cutting down into the stock very much. And, oops, sorry about that. Okay, we'll work that down. Oh, well, that's pretty much right on. I'll give that a G92. Z equals zero, press enter, raise the machine up. Now I'm gonna do a G1, X0, Y0, Z1, but just a little bit of buffer so that it doesn't um, contact. Now see, I didn't press a feed rate in there, so it's moving at some uh, firmware to firm feed rate, which is super slow, that's all right. So that's going to be X0, Y0, and one millimeter above the stock. Looks pretty good to me. So what I'll do now is I'll raise it back up just a little bit. I've got my uh, USB stick with my G-code on it. We're going to load it. Test 1 is what I named it. Cool. That's loaded in here. So I'm going to turn on my spindle. Um, you can see in my last video too, another good way to test this is if you set your zero above your stock, you can kind of cut air and just watch the code go above your part and see if it's correct. That's a good thing uh, to do if you're not confident in running the code yet. But I'm pretty sure that this is going to be good. So turn it on. All right, we turned it on. I pressed uh, the print button. So it says it's got an ETE up here. And then up here, it says, turn on at 10,000. And that's because in our post-processor, we said manual spindle on off. So this is prompting us. So now all I need to do is press my LCD button. And there she goes. And now it'll run the code.